Welcome back, YouTubers. This is Brigand Survival with an episode on baked beans. Just kidding. This episode is not about baked beans. This episode is all about how you can make this can into a camping stove. Stay tuned. But seriously, if you are in the wilderness or if you're camping and you have one of these, you can always slice some hot dogs into it. And it is great to have, especially on a really nice, crisp, cool night. Some bushes, baked beans with some sliced hot dogs to die for. So how do you use this to make a cooking stove? Well, if you are in a survival situation um, and you happen to come across a metal can, you can use this to make a wood stove. So basically how you do that is um, you have to cut the can open in a fashion that I'll show you. And um, if you have a metal cup or something, you can place it on top. And then you put um, bio material like tinder and uh, maybe some kindling inside of here to make a small fire, which will then heat up the cup that's on top, and uh, and make a make a nice um, make a nice meal. So, first step is to take this bushes baked beans label off. So that's what I'm. Doing. Okay, so as you can see, I cut the label down along the seams using this here black folding knife, and um, so now. What you want to do is you want to cut down the length of the can and then using the grooves you want to um so you want to make one line vertical down the can almost the whole length of the can then you want to make two horizontal along those little side grooves that i'm sure you can see um, as a guide so um what you want to do is almost make an eye and that'll allow oxygen to come in for the fire so let's get to that so the easiest way to make that vertical line is to kind of ease the knife in using this kind of seesaw motion. Um, if I wasn't holding the camera, I'd be holding uh, the can right now. But um, you basically want to seesaw the knife in nice and slowly like this. That's how you do it. Okay, folks, that's what the outline of the capital I should look like. There is um, something at the bottom there, although it's hard to see. So that's what your outline should look like. Then all you gotta do is pull out these flaps here to get some, some oxygen in there. Remember the three things that you need to start a fire is air, fuel, and some sort of ignition or combustion. Okay, so this is gonna turn into a bio stove. If you were in a desperate situation, you could um, you could put a hot pot of wa um, water on this or you could cook food with this, so. But you would also need a second pot or can to put on top. Okay, although it's not the best, that's sort of what we're looking at. We want to be able to put um, biofuel into this to start a fire. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like to do that. So whenever you have any kind of um, kindling, you wanna try to strip the bark down. So what I actually did is I used these two, um, these two little sticks here to strip the bark off of this, um, which is gonna make it much more combustible for this long stick. I use these almost like chopsticks. I grabbed them tight and then for, forcefully push it through here, which you can see has created all these little fine needles and stuff, which are gonna make great tinder, okay? Now all I gotta do is break this stick down, and um, I'm not gonna start a fire because I'm indoors, but this is, um, this is good learning for people who um, are just looking for how to start a fire. Um, it's important to remember to strip the kindling of the bark, because that's what usually is the wettest, and the inner layers inside, um, of these little sticks called kindling are usually much drier. So strip the bark off first. Okay, so there's my little science experiment there. Um, as you can see, those fibers are really dry for that inner piece of kindling. Um, if I wanted to, I could use my knife and even strip these down, um, down the, the, the vertical length of the middle to make them even thinner, but I have a feeling that this would light. Um, you can also use your knife. Alternatively, you saw that technique I used using two twigs and grasping them tightly together to get the bark off and to make these nice little dry fibers that you need. Um, but you can also do that with a knife. You can just strip it down with a knife. So um, as uh, bushcraft people always say, you know, a knife is so important. Um, if you don't have a knife in a survival situation, um, you're going to need to improvise, you know, find a razor blade or a a piece of a metal can or sharpen a rock or something because um, cause having a sharp object is really a necessity for these types of tasks. 
so that's what the actual stove would look like let me show you what it would look like with the pot on top so that's what it would look like with the pot on top right there um you know you can have a pretty big camping pot or um, a smaller one. Um, that's just the one I happen to take out. Um, you probably want a smaller pot than that, but you could make it work. It will balance out, um, especially if it's got food inside of it. So um, that can, the structural integrity of it, you know, it's even when it gets hot, it's still gonna retain that rigidity since it's metal. Um, it's not gonna melt or anything. Um, if it was a lighter metal can, like a beer can, it could um, much sooner lose its integrity, but that will last for, I would say probably about nine or 10 fires that you could really cook um, and uh, provide a little bit of extra warmth as well. A nice concealable fire and a way to cook um, a meal or, or, or to purify water. So great wilderness survival technique.